I've got a piston here uh, with the piston rings and the block that it goes in. I'm going to talk about a couple of the measurements that would be performed um, when evaluating the piston rings um, to determine whether or not they're serviceable, whether they need to be replaced. All right, so uh, just a, the names of the piston rings. This, this top one was typically called the, com the top compression ring. It helps to seal the compression gases as we have combustion events right here at the top of the piston. I then, I, I may have a second uh, ring below that that's an additional um, compression ring um, that also is, is uh, for sealing purposes at the top into the combustion chamber. And then at the bottom, I've already removed the ring at the bottom. I've got an oil um, scraper and this uh, little wavy washer. And what these, the, purpose, the main purpose of this is as I get oil on the cylinder wall for lubrication purposes, I want to be able to scrape that down and, and keep um, large quantities of oil from getting up in the combustion chamber and being consumed. So I've removed those two. It's important when removing uh, piston rings to use the appropriate tool. I've got several piston ring expanders here. So there's this style right here, very straightforward. The gap in the piston rings are used to be able to remove it. Um, this one works uh, fairly well. This is a slightly older design. Um, you're going to pinch the ring in the gaps here and uh, then separate the, the ring itself. So this one kind of retains it in position. And then the final one, this one seems like the biggest, but it actually uh, works the best and it's just going to clamp around the piston itself and then expand out the ring. So you don't want to take these piston rings off. Um, you, I don't want to just start pulling on this. Uh, it, they're very, uh, they're somewhat brittle so I could break it. Uh, I could break the land uh, or the grooves that, that retain the piston rings in position so I don't want to do any of that. So I'm simply just going to slide this on top of my piston here and it's going to expand and there I've removed my ring so I haven't damaged anything I don't want to expand it too far and now I've removed that ring so um, the rings themselves uh, very often times the rings are directional which means that you would not want to put the ring on upside down you'll have to check the service information of your specific engine in order to determine that it's typically based on some type of a taper or stepping that would occur out here on the ring itself so this one has some um, writing on it. It may also have some type of a dimple and that helps for orientation. There are some piston rings that, that are not oriented and so the um, putting them on there is not in the right orientation isn't uh, necessary. But for the most part these rings need to be placed on in a specific orientation. So now I'm going to take off the second compression ring once again keeping in mind the correct orientation for the ring and now I'll keep them in order alright so one of the first measurements that I would perform on a uh, um, on a ring is the end gap measurement and what we're talking about when we're talking about the end gap is as this ring is put in the cylinder it's going to decrease this gap Okay, on a lot of performance engines, this would actually end up touching. Okay, but on most uh, production vehicles, there's going to be a small amount of gap, and there's then a specification to determine if the gap is an appropriate um, width. So, um, a couple things to take into consideration. You're going to slide this, this into the cylinder. I'm just going to kind of feed it like that. Now, before you do any tests, this has to be, this is, needs to be square inside there. So, I'm not doing an accurate measurement of the gap if I put the ring in like that. So I'm going to place my ring in in position and there's tools that would push down evenly and make sure that the ring is nice and square in the cylinder. But since I already have this piston disassembled I'm going to be very gentle with it and I'm just going to slide it down. The nice part about this is I can put it down to a uniform depth. I want to get it past the point where the, the rings would actually contact somewhere in the middle of the cylinder. If I were to push this piston down until the skirt right here is even on both sides, that ensures that I'm measuring it at the same position 
for each cylinder. So that's a good idea to just get it nice and square inside there. So then I'm going to remove my um, piston that squared up the uh, ring inside of the cylinder. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm then I'm going to make a measurement of that gap. The way that you make a measurement of that gap is you use a feeler gauge. So I've got a feeler gauge here and I'm just going to st start sliding uh, the feeler gauge blades down into the gap. And I'm looking for a nice drag. So this particular measurement is feeling pretty good as far as the amount of drag. A good uh, technique when using a feeler gauge, if you're not quite sure if it is the right size, go one above. And notice when I go one above, I can't even get it in the gap. And then I go one below. And notice that I have a lot of looseness. So that helps me to identify which one is the appropriate one um, for the gap. The next thing that I'm concerned about is I'm going to remove the, the... I would do this particular measurement for each of the pistons, um, each of the piston rings, uh, including the oil ring. Um, and the other compression ring. Then I'm going to uh, install the rings back on the piston. So I just use my ring expander here and it just slides it in place. Now I'm only installing this top one for the demonstration purposes but obviously you would want to put all of the rings on. Typically it's easiest if you start from the bottom, the bottom groove um, or gap. Um, so I've got my, my top uh, compression ring um, I'm sorry, my piston, my the top piston ring, and I'm determining whether or not um, it uh, has an appropriate side clearance. So, in order to measure side clearance, and I'm just going to slide this down in here, you could hold this up. Um, but in order to measure side clearance, I'm simply just looking at um, the clearance between the piston um, lands and the piston rings themselves. So there's a specification that identifies the gap that should be associated with that. So most of the time that gap is actually fairly small. I'm going to grab a feeler gauge for this same uh, measurement. Okay, so I'm rotate it around. So this way I'm about 180 degrees away from where the gap is. And I'm simply going to slide my feeler gauge in kind of at the same time as I slide the, the ring in. And that will help me to identify I've got a little bit of looseness. Um, so that's pretty close to the appropriate measurement. I could go one above and see if I can get some movement in here. And that would indicate whether or not I have the appropriate length. Now if you take the feeler gauge and you just try to slide it in, it's somewhat difficult. So that technique where you let the ring out and you slide them in together uh, tends to, to work a lot better to identify um, the side clearance um, on this uh, on this ring.